This is part two of our solar inverter build series for our Grand Design fifth wheel. This video is not just for DIYers. Whether you're considering designing and installing the system yourself or having a professional do it, you should understand all the design and installation choices to make sure you have the best system for your needs. This video will focus on the batteries only. This is one of the most important choices when designing a solar inverter system for your RV. When I say lithium battery in this video, I'm talking about lithium iron phosphate chemistry batteries with a built-in battery management system that are rated as drop and replacement for lead acid chemistry batteries. Why lithium? Batteries are the most important component of our system. We could have saved a lot of money if we installed lead acid chemistry batteries like golf cart style batteries or absorbed glass mat AGM batteries but those type of batteries would be much heavier and require much more space for the 400 amp hours of storage we wanted. I'm gonna go over several important battery choice considerations and we'll be comparing a high quality 100 amp hour AGM battery to our 100 amp hours of lithium battery batteries as an example. Usable storage capacity. To maximize battery life, AGM batteries should only be discharged to 50% of their rated capacity but lithium batteries can be discharged 80 to 90% of their rated capacity without decreasing their life. A 100 amp hour AGM battery time four batteries equals 400 amp hours, times 50% equals 200 amp hours of usable storage. Our 100 amp hour Battleborn times four batteries equals 400 amp hours, times 80% equals 320 amp hours of usable storage, which will give us 120 more amp hours of usable storage space compared to AGM batteries. If I wanted to use AGM batteries and wanted to have 300 amp hours of usable storage, I would need six AGM batteries versus four lithium batteries. Lifespan. Lithium batteries have a much longer lifespan than AGM batteries and can be cycled many more times. AGM batteries are rated for 1000 to 1200 cycles when discharging to 50% of capacity. Our Battleborn batteries are rated for 3,000 to 5,000 cycles when discharging to 80% capacity. Our lithium Battleborn batteries should last at least three times as long as AGM batteries. Size. The size of a comparable AGM battery to our Battleborn batteries is very similar. A comparable AGM battery is 12 inches long, seven inches wide, and nine inches tall. Our 100 amp hour Battleborn battery is 13 inches long, seven inches wide, and nine inches tall. Voltage. 12 volt rated lithium batteries and 12 volt rated AGM batteries have a very similar voltage range. AGM batteries are 11.5 volts at 20% and 12.8 volts at 100% of charge. Our Battleborn batteries are 12.9 volts at 20% and 14.4 volts at 100% of charge. <clears throat> weight. There is a huge difference in weight between AGM and lithium batteries. A comparable 100 amp hour AGM battery weighs about 65 pounds. Our 100 amp hour Battleborn battery is less than half of that at 31 pounds. This was one of the most important considerations for us as we are very close to our maximum gross vehicle weight rating for our Grand Design Solitude 310 GK because we live and travel in it full time. Our Battleborn battery weighs 34 pounds, less per battery times four batteries is 136 pounds. That means we have 136 pounds more storage capacity for our RV supplies, tools, and toys. Cost. Cost is another category where there is a huge difference between lithium and AGM batteries. A high quality 100 amp hour AGM battery costs about $275. Our 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries cost $874 when we bought them in May 2020. To compare cost apples to apples, we need to look at usable storage as our benchmark. For 300 amp hours of usable storage, we would need six AGM batteries, as each 100 amp hour battery only delivers 50 amp hours of usable storage because they can only be drained to 50% of charge to extend their life. For 300 amp hours of usable storage, we would only need four Battleborn lithium batteries 
as each 100 amp hour battery delivers 80 amp hours of usable storage because they can be drained up to 20% of charge and still have extended life. Total cost of six AGM batteries would be $1,650. Total cost of our Battleborns, $3,496. Our lithiums cost more than twice as much up front, but weigh half as much and should last three times as long as the AGM equivalent. I have only gone over a few of the important considerations in choosing which battery chemistry is right for you. There are many more, warranty, installation orientation, maintenance, etc. Make sure you do your research before making your final choice. Lithium was really the only battery style we looked at because of weight and usable storage capacity. The good news is lithium prices are coming down and there's lots of cheaper lithium battery brands available. One downside to lithium is that they cannot be charged at low temperatures without causing permanent damage to the cells. AGM batteries can be charged at low temperatures, but with decreased efficiency. We don't plan on spending much time in cold temperatures, so temperature was not a consideration for us. The whole reason we do this lifestyle is to avoid extreme temperatures. If you're going to be in below freezing temperatures, Battleborn does offer batteries with integrated heating. In the end, lithium batteries are much more expensive up front, but are a much better value in the long run. Why Battleborn? When I was designing my system in the spring of 2020, there weren't many lithium battery brands to choose from. We bought our Battleborn batteries with our own money direct from Battleborn 18 months ago. We wanted a lithium battery that was a drop and replacement for lead acid style batteries. That means it had to have a built-in battery management system or BMS. The BMS is basically electronics inside the battery that manages things like discharge current, high and low voltage protection, short circuit protection, high and low temperature protection, cold charging protection, and cell balancing. All lithium batteries require this management because lithium cells can be damaged or become unsafe if these parameters are not monitored, man, uh, monitored and managed properly. Battleborn batteries come with a very robust BMS in each battery, which simplifies the addition of lithium batteries to our solar inverter system for our RV. Battleborn says their batteries are designed to last 10 to 15 years and offer a 10-year warranty on all their batteries. There are many more alternatives to Battleborn on the market now, which offer similar design and specs at much lower prices. But to be honest, I would probably still pick Battleborn if I had to do it today because they are the benchmark lithium battery for installation in RVs. Battleborn batteries are designed and assembled in the United States and many of these competitive batteries are from overseas and do not have a proven track record and do not offer a 10 year warranty. How many batteries? How do we decide on buying four Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries? We did a lot of research on the subject. Many other similar fifth wheels were putting 400 to 600 amp hours of batteries. We were trying to keep our total budget for our solar inverter project under $10,000 total cost, which limited our budget on batteries. I did an electrical audit on all of our electrical appliances and devices, which included measuring the number of watts each device will require from the battery bank. I used our kilowatt meter to measure the amount of watts of energy usage on all of our 120 volt appliances. This helps us determine the battery bank size and the size of the inverter that we'll need. As an example, our desktop computer uses 250 watts of energy to run, and we use it an average of three hours per day. That's three hours times 250 watts equals 750 watt hours per day. Our TV uses 80 watts of energy, and we have it on for about four hours every night. That's four hours times 80 watts equals 320 watt hours per day. Our air filter uses 20 watts of energy, and it's on for 24 hours a day. That's 24 hours times 20 watts equals 480 watt hours per day. Those three appliances alone use a total of 1,550 watt hours per day. A 100 amp hour Battleborn battery is rated for 1,200 watt hours of capacity per battery. That is calculated by multiplying 100 amp hours times 12 volts equals 1,200 watt hours. If we have 400 amp hours of batteries with a usable capacity of 320 amp hours, remember 400 times 80% equals 
320 amp hours. 320 amp hours times 12 volts equals 3,840 watt hours of total capacity. Our computer, TV, air filter alone use 1,550 watt hours per day or about 40% of our 3,840 watt hours of usable capacity. Of course, we would still have all of our other 12 volt appliances running like lights, 12 volt fan for the heater, max air fans, and the 12 volt supply for the refrigerator when running on propane. We would have to account for the number of watts those devices would be consuming also. I can make a video that goes on for hours about how to measure and calculate energy consumption. The point I want to make here is that you need to take your specific needs into consideration when deciding how many batteries you need. Most people don't have an energy hogging desktop computer like in their RV like us. I have no idea how other YouTube channels edit videos on laptops. Maybe you have a CPAP that runs for 10 hours while you sleep every night. It's important that you consider how much energy storage you need for your situation. I knew that we were going to install one 3000 watt inverter and most systems that I researched would have four to six 100 amp hour batteries in this scenario. Systems that had two 3000 watt inverters have between six and eight 100 amp hour batteries in their system. Systems that were designed to run on one or more air conditioners on batteries alone without a generator had eight to 12 100 amp hour batteries. If that is something you want to do, you better have a big budget for lots of batteries, multiple inverters, and as much solar as your roof can accommodate. One of the choices you will face when designing your battery inverter system is whether you want to build the system with 12 or 24 volt batteries. There are advantages to both, but most people build a 12 volt system because most RVs already configured with a 12 volt DC system. Why consider 24 volts versus 12 volts? A 24 volt battery system will have half the amount of amp draw on the wires for the same power load. Smaller amp draw means you can use smaller wires to connect system components. Smaller wire is cheaper to buy and easier to install. There will be less voltage drop on the system and will operate a little bit more efficiently. A good rule of thumb is that if you are designing an inverter system with over 3000 watts, then you may want to consider choosing a 24 volt battery system. If less than 3000 watts, a 12 volt system should be fine. One more advantage of a 24 volt system is many MPPT solar controllers can handle double the amount of solar panel input charging a 24 volt system as they can a 12 volt system. For instance, our 12 volt system, we can install up to 1440 watts of solar panels with our current solar controller. If we were on a 24 volt system, that same solar controller could handle 2880 watts of solar panels. One downside to the 24 volt battery bank is that you will need to install an extra component called a DC to DC converter to convert the 12 volt battery power to 12 volts for your 12 volt RV appliances like lights, fans, hydraulic slide and leveling motors, tail lights, etc. These DC to DC converters increase the cost of the system and there is an efficiency cost for this DC to DC conversion. Where to buy? If you have decided on using Battleborn batteries like we did, I suggest buying them directly from Battleborn. They're also available on Amazon, but when I checked before making this video, the price direct from Battleborn website was cheaper than Amazon. And if you buy directly, you will be automatically be registered for your 10 year warranty. The warranty is non-transferable. And if you purchase the batteries from a dealer, you will have to go through the dealer for any warranty claims. Battleborn also sells all the other Victron components that I am going to recommend in this video series, and they offer them at competitive prices. Their consultants are very knowledgeable and will help you design and purchase system components that will work together, helping take out some of the guesswork. If you are considering buying a different brand of lithium battery, then you should spend some time watching a channel called DIY Solar with Will Prowse. He has tested and torn apart the Battleborn battery along with most other lithium drop and replacement batteries on the market. Make sure you watch the video on the battery you are considering buying. Where to mount? Depending on your RV, there may be several different places that can accommodate your battery bank. 
Most RVs come stock with one or maybe two batteries from the factory, so you will need a much larger space if you're going to install four to six batteries. We really had two choices, the forward compartment where the stock battery was installed under the hydraulic components or here in the main basement area. I didn't want to give up prime storage in either. We need every square inch of storage for our full-time travel adventures. I have lots of toys and tools. I took out the walls from our basement area and discovered an unused space under the stairs that go from the kitchen to the bedroom. With some minor alterations to the stair supports, I can install our four batteries and the inverter and increase the size of our basement storage. Grand Design did not do a good job in designing the basement for maximum storage. Sometimes I really question who is designing RVs these days. Since the stock battery was in the front compartment and we were moving the battery bank backward to the main basement area, I had to figure out a way to feed the power forward to the high amp draw devices in the forward compartment like the hydraulic motor for the main slides and leveling system and the Schwintec controller and motors for the bedroom slide. Those devices were originally, originally connected directly to the battery in the forward compartment. I will go over exactly how I powered these devices and how I altered the stair supports and created space for the battery bank in the next video in this solar series. If you are considering a professional installer, I highly recommend Mike and Leanna from the Dry Campers. I will leave a link to their YouTube channel in the video description. They have a ton of videos where they show how they install complete, customized solar solutions for their customers. Are you thinking of adding a solar inverter system with a large battery bank to your RV? Are you thinking of doing it yourself or you can use a professional installer? Please let us know in the comment section below. You can also leave a comment if you have any questions. I will be doing future videos on installing the batteries, battery monitor, fuses, inverter, surge protector, smart phase selector, solar panels, solar controller, and the color control GX. If you don't want to miss one of these future videos, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. I will also leave a link right up here for our previous video in the series and a link right down here for the next video in the series.